hello i hope that you can see and hear me okay just gonna adjust the camera angle a little bit um yes say hello if you're here i'm just trying to get as per usual my channel up so that i can actually see your comments oh hang on what have i done oh that's weird um okay i think <laughs> there we are right okay the video's there i can see a comment from scotty bean hey scott let me just oh we've got a few comments here carty's in the house i can see uh, lizzie beans here uh three seven hi three seven um three seven has a channel doing perfumes as well if any of you haven't already checked her out go and have a look she says snowy owl yes i'm really excited to try snowy owl and musk deer i keep wanting to say deer musk but musk deer it is i'll try and say that proper so we've got carty uh, we've got scott uh, teachers pets have, have arrived says carty um Lizzie says, guess what veg I've got for dinner, Scott? Uh, I don't, oh, what's, there's a veg that Scott obviously doesn't like then. Brussels sprouts? Oh, I see, I, Brussels sprout emojis. Ew, yeah, I'm not a fan either. A taste of iron. Ugh. And Catty had Brussels sprouts yesterday. So now we, now we know what uh, veg Lizzie Bean had for dinner. Maybe we can share what we've had for lunch or dinner today. I had, um, hey Tony, I think Tony would approve actually, kind of, of my dinner. I had chicken pizza. That doesn't mean it was a pizza with chicken on top. It means it was a pizza made out of chicken. So you, uh, what I did was cut the breast uh, down the middle, then flatten it out, and then you bash it, give it a good bashing, and then put some, I made some tomato sauce out of passata and a few other things and some uh, onions and what else did I have? Some peppers and stuff. And then I made skinny fries. So I'm watching my calorie intake and I made these skinny fries. I had them yesterday as well. And um, you just chop uh, potato into tiny little chips and then the way that you cook them all separate on the baking tray makes them go quite nice and crispy. So that was my dinner, a little bit of salad on the side. If I'm honest though, chicken pizza, it's not all that. I think it's too meaty. I, when I have pizza, I don't have meat on my pizza. I uh, generally have the margarita or maybe just onion or chili, that kind of stuff. And um, it's like weird, it's not really pizza obviously because it's made out of chicken, but yeah, I'd rather find an alternative that wasn't, the chicken still felt too thick. It was still sort of that thick. I think it would be better if it was much skinnier or if I could find a different base for the pizza that's still sort of lower in calories. Any ideas, let me know. Um, let's see, who else have we got here now? Uh, why are my comments on it? Are my comments freezing? Like, here we are. Kevin's here. Hiya, Kevin from the States. Hi, Kevin. And Drillbit's here. Hello, Petal. Hi, Drillbit. And Hills, Hilary of the Borough. Hey, y'all. Hilary's here in the house. Now, who else have we got? Uh, Lizzie says I love chicken it can do no wrong as long as it's in date oh yeah that's quite important and we've got John here John Snow John boy okay right so uh, yeah feel free to share your snacks your dinners your lunches and your drinks I'm gonna give you my drink now and I've got I'm not drinking tonight again because I'm watching calories so I've got squash I drink my squash really weak uh, this one's like a pink grapefruit, quite refreshing. And I've also got a coffee. I just quickly made myself. Mm, lovely, love coffee. Right, uh, Scotty Bean's got squash as well. John's had a chicken roast and 
donuts dying oh you fat bastard <laughs> how nice oh, i love a roast dinner roast dinner is my favorite thing one of my favorite things for sure uh, hillary had lettuce wrapped burgers for lunch that sounds nice was it a nice juicy burger heels claire oh, sorry claire <laughs> chris says claire looking absolutely lovely as always thank you chris and katie's on the extra dry cider Lizzie's wearing under my skin and her drink is coffee as well. <laughs> Tony loves the sprout coloured jumper and has a sparkling grapefruit drink called Ting. Okay. Uh, Carty's wearing BDK's Oud um, Abramad. Abramad? Abramad. I won't try anymore. <laughs> and Hill says, you know I like it juicy, Claire. Oh, yes. Drill bit, I do like a sparkling water, elderflower cordial, very nice. JC Russell, hi there, how you doing, he says. Good, thanks, JC. Jack is here, she says hi all. Scott is wearing Electimus Rodanthe. I don't know that one. Uh, Chris is wearing Almond Jane's Vanilla Duras, lovely, lovely powdery iris. Uh, vanilla iris, yep. Uh, Tony's wearing 003 again, I think you would like it, Claire. Um, I think, was it Scott who sent me two samples of Hudson's? I think I got one and two though. Um, but yes, I know a lot of you guys are enjoying the Hudson's fragrances, which is a UK company. Jackie's got Daisies on by Moth and Rabbit. I haven't tried that one. <laughs> JC Russell says, I love your channel. I love you. Thank you very much, JC. And John is wearing Noir de Noir and Gucci, Gucci, is that a Gucci Guilty? What's a GGG? Oh, Good Girl Gone Bad, of course. It's got to be a Killian, hasn't it, John? Right then, let's get on with this because I'm not going to stay here all night. It's going to be a quickie because I like a quickie now and then and I know that you lot do too. So let's have a look at this box, shall we? So this is the Natural Selection set and it's, obviously it's zoologist and this contains his new versions of several fragrances he's reformulated as well as snowy owl and musk deer so there's what it looks like and can you can see these decants or uh, travel sizes are longer and skinnier than they used to be so let's get one out get one out for you there it is in comparison to my hand. I have an average sized hand maybe. Um, so that one is Dodo. So this is all of the, the Dodo, the Koala and the Rhinoceros are, I understand, re all reformulated. Uh, I don't know why, I know there are, there are lots of reasons why, uh, especially the, um, the smaller brands have to reformulate um, when it comes to sourcing materials, etc. So we won't go into why, but we're definitely interested in what they smell like. We've got the new snowy owl and the new musk deer. Now, the sensible part of me is thinking, smell the lighter ones first. That's what you're supposed to do. If you're going to sniff a few things, you should always start light in the head, darker, uh, just to sort of save your nostrils. However, I kind of want to save the two new ones till last. And let's just hope that my nose doesn't fail me. So I think, um, let's have a look. Uh, Hill says, oh my God, I can't wait to smell snowy out. I'm going to sell my body so I can get the special edition bottle to match my musk deer. <laughs> Hills, I'll buy your body. I've got some savings set aside actually just for that. Tony says length over girth. I don't know, I mean, if I'm honest with you, Tony, both. Lizzie says, the aesthetic of Snowy Owl is gorgeous, but I have a feeling I'll love Deer Musk after hearing Tom's first impressions. Yeah, Lizzie, when I heard Tom's impressions, uh, that's Ouch 110, if you don't know, I felt like maybe I'm not going to love Snowy Owl because it sounds like it might be a bit green, uh, but Musk Deer, and all the reviews of Musk Deer all sound like I'm going to love them, I'm going to love it. Okay, oh, is, 
Is Victor here? Someone says, hey, Victor, but I don't see his... Is he here? Oh, there he is. Hi, Victor. He says, hello, everyone. So Victor Wong is in the house. I'm sure you all know that he is the brand owner, creative director, one-man band, genius, that created the whole line. And there we are again, just because it's so beautiful if you, if it will focus properly i don't think it will so yeah we're not going to start light we're going to start with uh, we've got dodo out of the box now so let's do dodo so there he is i've got some bits i cut where did i put the cut oh there we go i've even specially cut the paper and wrote the names of all the fragrances because i'm a little bit prepared a little tiny bit prepared um, right then, and we have Just Add Light here. It is Don, isn't it? Uh, Just Add Light, I believe your name is Don. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if I've seen you in many lives. You comment often on um, on my videos and, and videos of lots of people that I watch. So you're a, a, a frag aficionado for sure. Ooh, so Dodo, I'm smelling it in the air already. Let's pop that down there. Let's take a swig of coffee. And the thing is, I can't quite remember how this one smelled because it was a long time ago when I smelt dodo. But let's try it. So this is reminding me, is it a little tiny bit of Le Mail? Um, it's Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mail. Not that it smells like Le Mail, but it's got something in common in there. Um, I don't know if it's an Artemisia. Uh, maybe Victor can, I don't have the notes for this one. Is there some Artemisia or Wormwood in here, Victor? It's got that kind of musky, smooth, lightly spicy, but very smooth feel. It's got a little bit of a bite. There's a sort of like a bitter green, um, almost like, dark green leaves, very bitter, but this lovely, smooth, musky, soft, fluffy thing, not fl not super fluffy, but like what's in Le Mal. you know the smooth part of Le Mal. but it smells, there's like greenness, there's spiciness, there's a little bit of bitterness. Jackie says, I think Dodo has a prominent rosemary note, if I recall correctly. Okay, and let's just have a quick scroll up, see if I've missed anything. Um, Don, yes, okay. I thought so, I just wanted to double check. A base is a traditional fougere, says Victor. <laughs> Empty Sense says, I want Xmas presents, looking at you heels, kidding. Well, MT, if you've got the money, if you've got the dough, then um, and she's all yours, but I'm going to try and outbid you. Uh, Rose and Jones, Lizzie says, I think I'd love the new Dodo too. I hear it's beautifully fruity and juicy. Yeah, it's quite fruity. Um, fresh, fresh, sharp, sharp and bitter kind of rolled into one, but not in an overly, like, over not overdone, not too, not too much of anything, but green, spicy, outdoorsy. I think what we'll do, we'll let that one settle for a bit. We'll, I'll lay that one here and we'll move on to the next because they will change and we can then we can come back to them. So the next one we'll do is Koala. And I don't remember if I tried this. I, re I don't think I did. Um, okay, so let's do Koala. Pop that over there. Swig of coffee. I have to drink it quick because I don't like it going cold and it was already on the it's already on the way. Okay. Uh, Don says to Victor, you have a tremendous brand, brother Canada represent. Um, let's have a look further down here. I 
I feel like I might miss because you, when you scroll, you kind of miss stuff. Um, so Carty says, I think I'd like koala. Jackie says, oh, I really like koala. Koala is on my must-have list, says Heels. Okay. Uh, Jackie says, a bit eucalyptus menthol in the opening, but I like it sampled in the summer. So it was great. So Victor, is koala, uh, re is koala reformulated or is this... Um, the original, but I don't think I smelt this before. Um, yeah, so this is this has definitely got a, quite a strong woodsiness in the background. Koala is new. Oh yeah, okay. It's clean. Again, there's green, but not not the sort of bitteriness that I got from um, Dodo. This is more clean green. I'm still thinking leaves, leaves though, but just not quite so dark and bitter as what I was getting from Dodo. Definitely a clean scent. There's not, um, there's nothing in here that's weird or animalic or anything. And it does have that uplifting, menthylated feel. Obviously, there's eucalyptus because it's koala, and I think that's their main diet, isn't it? Do you think their poop smells menthylated? If you know, let me know. Uh, we are sentient is here. Um, uh, so Victor didn't promote koala at the time he launched it earlier this year because he ran out of bottles. So that's why. Um, yeah, this is... Oh, I can really smell the the menthol, the eucalyptus. But it's not like you're smelling Vicks Vapor Rub, you know, it's not any, to any, it's just, it's there, but it's not overtaking everything, which you think it would because it's such a strong note, isn't it? If you think of how eucalyptus smells. It's obviously, it's handled very carefully so that it's not overtaking everything. And it's, yeah, so to me it's sort of green, green leaves, a lovely clean woodsy base, a hint of this menthylated eucalyptus. Something else coming through, almost like, um, a, I don't know if it's a black currant or that kind of thing. And like, you know, like a kind of sharp. Yeah, and like um, black, is it blackberries? The ones that you, you pick off the bushes. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's what it is, but uh, Victor says, koala has mimosa tea and chai spice. Hmm. It's a hint spicy. It's a hint of spiciness. Now you say that, yeah. Almost like, it's like a mixed spice, you know, like you can buy the pre-mixed spice that you, for, for cooking sweet stuff, usually. Um, it doesn't smell like a, like a garam masala or a curry kind of spice, it's a sweet spice, it's like a combination of, I don't know, nutmeg and ginger and that kind of stuff. Mm. I mean, these need to be on skin. As you see, Tony says, he sounds great, chai spice has my ears pricked. Um, yeah, I feel like paper's not going to do them justice, but I'm going to, I've got perfume on my hands already. Once we've done these once, I'm going to put a couple on my arms. But yeah, that's really nice. It's not screaming masculine or feminine in any kind of way. Straight down the line. And that's koala, so we'll pop that one over here now. And then we'll move on then. So we'll do rhino, rhinoceros. So the original rhinoceros, I'm not a fan of because the leather is is so strong in it and I'm just not a leather fan. If leather's toned down, if it's more like a suede, if it's not the main note, I can, I can enjoy it. But when it's very strong, I can't enjoy it. It's, it's too much. Like I don't mind smelling leather scents on other people, but for me to wear a strong leather scent, it would aggravate me. So here we go with Rhino. Let's see how. Now again, I can't 
compare it to the original um but whoa okay that's weird okay when i say weird what i mean is this, that's just giving me some memories um first of all it smells like tobacco um it's reminding me of my grandparents house uh, both heavy smokers um and it kind of smells like cigarette smoke uh, that's been left, not, it's just been smoked right in front of your face, but it's been smoked in the room maybe previously before, you know, the cigarette's long been put out, but um, it's, I don't know why I'm getting that and I'm certain that that's not going to be a no. Um, but there's more to it than that, of course. It's just that's the one that hit me because it, because it had a memory attached to it. Um, so um, there's a there's a green <laughs> um, what is this? This is really unusual. I don't smell leather at the moment. I think there's still leather in here. Um, I'd imagine there would be, but it's reminding me maybe a little bit more of dodo. Yeah, it's, it's very strong. It's, um, I don't know if there's some labdanum. It's quite rich. It's very full bodied, very rich. I'm sensing green, dark greens, browns, um, autumn, very autumnal or, or even wintry, more autumnal because I'm seeing the, the colors of autumn leaves here. I feel like that cigarette smoky thing that I got is really quite fading away, which I think for me is a good thing. Trust me. Um, <laughs> oh, Rich Mitch is here. Hey, Rich. And we've got perfumes with Pat. Tracy from Comfort in Sense is here. Mm -mm -mm. So quickly scroll up, make sure I haven't missed too much. Uh, Rich Mitch is wearing Coromandel. New Rhino is by Print and it's a tobacco scent, says Victor. That makes sense then, because it really is. Um, for me, that was really what I got massively at the beginning. It's really unusual. Um, Because tobacco, sometimes tobacco scents, the tobacco is from the tobacco leaf. Sometimes it can smell more like a packet of tobacco, like rolling tobacco. Um, and as I say, to me, I initially got cigarette smoke, which you wouldn't normally get with a tobacco kind of a note in fragrances, unless they're, they're aiming for that. Um, but now I get a dark brown dense kind of not maybe it is a little bit leathery I don't know if there's birch tar like a little bit smoky it's smoky dark slightly savory it's got a you know like kind of like not salty but a savory feel it's very unusual I'd like to try it on skin it's for me, it's more appealing than the original Rhino just because it doesn't have that massive leather. But yeah, it's green, dark, savoury, very interesting, very dense, very... There's probably a whole lot going in here that I simply can't pinpoint. So that's Rhino for now. We'll pop that one down over here as well. Quick swig of coffee because I hate it going cold. And then we will move on to the two new ones. Who's excited? What do you want first then? Snowy owl or deer musk? Musk deer. Must stop calling it deer musk. Hands up. Tell me what you want. And I'll, um, I'll go with whoever's with a, I'll go with the majority for the quick firers. I'll we'll say that. Let's just quickly scroll through your, um, we are sentient says I need to try some zoology soon yes you definitely do need to get your nose get your nose on it 
Jackie says, this sounds like my jam. I do like tobacco, dark, rich, wintry scents. Yeah, I think you will. Um, I'm not brilliant at fragrance genres, but is Rhino a sheepra? It's feeling sort of sheepery uh, in that kind of like mossy green thing. Um, <laughs> Victor says, your hands are full of perfumes now. Yes. Um, let's see. <laughs> Rich says, hello everyone, he said, hello, you are too many to say hello to individually. Yeah, that's, um, that's always a problem, isn't it, to try and say hello to everyone. Just quickly looking through your comments. Okay then, We Are Sentient has voted for Snowy Owl. Don has said, has done an owl emoji. Sal is here, hi Sal. Uh, Sal says, uh, Snowy Owl. Jackie says, Snowy Owl. 37 says, Owl. Hill of Hills says Al. Scott says Snowy. Okay, right. Well, I think that's enough um, enough voting. We're going to go with Snowy Al next. So well, I think we'll just go straight on skin, actually, because that's better, isn't it? It's better if it's done on skin. So I've got a clean arm up here, no perfume up here. So we're going to go on then. Look at, look at this. How lovely. So we're going to go up here then with Snowy Owl. Plenty on. And I'm going to take a swig of coffee. That's it now, it's too lukewarm. It's too lukewarm for, cons it's no longer edible or drinkable even. Okay then. Uh, so Victor's uh, just saying he's going to be reopening his shop in January. Uh, he does everything himself, couldn't handle all the retail orders and they are getting... Okay, so uh, Victor did a post on Facebook the other day to say he's closing his online shop until January because he's got a lot of uh, orders to get out to retailers. But there are plenty of retailers about, so you won't struggle to find zoologist. Um, skin to skin is best but perfume on skin is also good I'm a fan of skin on skin Chris trust me well so this is clearly quite highly concentrated in oils because it's, it's left a nice sheen you probably can't quite catch it but it's left quite a good sheen on my skin so let's have a sniff wow okay so it, yes there is a greenness in here but there's a plush a plushness. There's this soft, unusual thing that I can't exactly describe. Let me try. So I know it has this calamus oil in it, which I have never smelled before. And I understand it's kind of aromatic, a little bit green and a little bit spicy. This is, so it's obviously supposed to be snowy, out, cold, and I kind of do get like I feel like a pine forest covered in snow. I don't know if it's pine, um, but it's, yeah, it's weird. And maybe if the imagery wasn't there, I wouldn't be thinking of it, but it does feel kind of cold. Um, oh, maybe I've got Calamus wrong. Jackie says Calamus is also a musk deer. It's a type of grass, if I'm remembering correctly, and is called cool green sweet note. Okay, I might be mixing up my owls and deers here. So I think um, Calamus is in the deer one, not, um, not the owl one, unless I'm wrong. <laughs> Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, Lizzie says, once you get back on track, Victor, I'll be looking forward to your creation of Peacock. Only joking. Why joke, Lizzie? Oh, that would be amazing. We've had this dis discussion, haven't we? What we'd like. I said flamingo. All the different pink ingredients, you know, like sweet, like pink pepper and 
candy floss and pink roses. What else is pink? I've come up with all sorts in the past, probably uh, shrimps, not actual like fish, but the sweets, the foam sweets, pink shrimps. That, that would be an amazing note in perfumery. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, just quickly have a check, make sure I'm not missing any other comments. Oh, I've gone too far. <laughs> Sorry about this. I do struggle with these comments. Uh, Snowy Owl is three accords, mint and snow, then iris and lily of the valley, and finally musk. So <laughs> how strange that I'm getting sort of like a pine forest. I'm seeing trees covered in snow um it is a bit fruity did you say anything about fruits i can't remember mint snow iris lily and musk it does smell musky which i think gives it the sort of fluffy feathery feel but it's definitely got a greenness to it like it's with l lily obviously lilies come on stems don't they um but I'm picturing the whole lily on the stem, like those stems of lilies, I'm thinking the ones in my garden, kind of like they're hollow, aren't they? And if you squish, you get like a little bit of juice out of them, if that's, if that's... Anyway, so I'm thinking of the stem, like the juicy stem. It's, it's got, um, yes, it's got like a moistness to it, like fresh, moist stem scent. Uh, coconut. I would never have picked out coconut. Maybe that'll come through later. A mint. It... Yeah, so I, I guess I was expecting more mint and more coconut. I think I was imagining almost a gourmand fragrance. And it's not. It's green. It's fresh, it's, again, it's very clean, but it's fluffy. So even though it's fresh, it's fluffy with, I guess, the muskiness. It has a, a very, almost like a tomato leaf, actually. If, um, yeah, if I was guessing ingredients, I'd be putting tomato leaf in here. Um, a very natural feel, very, outdoors natural things that grow in nature but then fluffy and musky um tony says squeeze and get some moistness out yeah <laughs> uh tracy says on passant is my fluffy green fragrance and we'll be sampling snowy Victor says, snow smells a bit like cucumber and watermelon. Yeah, there's, a, there's people were talking about what can snow possibly smell like. There's a particular thing that happens when you walk out into a, a very cold day when there's snow everywhere. There's this crispness in the air, isn't there? And it affects your nose. It, so what you smell, everything you smell is affected by this sharp crispness in the air. So you it changes your sense of smell to a certain degree. So I think, in my mind, I, when I think of a snow accord, I'm not thinking of picking up a pile of snow and smelling it, because I don't imagine there's too much scent, because it is, after all, it's just water. It's just gonna have probably an earthy scent to it, maybe, or depending on the surroundings. But there is this thing when you smell, or you step out in, from your warm house into, the, into a snowy area, there's this crisp crispness and yeah everything smells is slightly affected by it so I can kind of see that I you know I wouldn't have obviously I wouldn't have said oh I can it smells like a, a, a snowy day but I, now you've got when you've got the vision there and you've got the idea is you can kind of see it it's yeah it's not as sweet as I expected and but it's very nice, very natural, very outdoorsy. 
So I think we will go on then with the next one. Tony says yellow snow has a tangy sugar puff kind of smell. That's only if you drank too much coffee and then you weed in it, Tony. Lizzie says it's true. I've been outside in the cold so much. I think it's affected my sniffing. All my sweet scents seem sweeter than usual, almost tea faking. Yeah, it cannot. Yeah, it's, it's weird, isn't it? And it can almost like hurt. That cold air kind of like hurts you a little bit in, in your sinuses, doesn't it, as it goes in. Uh, Tracy says solstice scents captures that a lot too. Yes, they do. I've got white, a sample of white fox. They do that very well. It's kind of like earthy snow. It's really clever. Um, Carty says snow smells. Oh, it's scrolled down. Hang on. Carty says, where is she? Snow smells airy and fluffy and a bit stingy. Is it stingy or stringy? or something else um oh here comes the cat don't knock them over sweetie no <laughs> what are you doing okay oh francis is here happiness sparkles i love the smell of snow and i know what you mean she says elaine says 34 in the room 13 likes i think elaine might be getting at something feel free to hit the like button <laughs> but it's fine if you don't it's okay right then um let's go on then come on let's do the deer let's do musk deer there he is and we're going to go on this arm which is clean Don't, sweetie, you're going to get sprayed. Okay. Plenty there. I can smell it in the air already. A really nice sort of sweet spiciness I'm getting in the air. Mmm, I like this one. So this... Is instantly reminding me a tiny bit of chameleon. So I don't know if there's Ylang, I don't think there's Ylang Ylang in here, but I think there is Jasmine. And I think that's probably what I'm getting straight away. A really beautiful white floral. With a tiny bit of, what is that? Yes, it, it's obviously, it is musky even from the start. You, there is a muskiness about it. Clean, clean musk. I like this one a lot. <laughs> yeah, so I, that would be, I know there's jasmine in here and it's beautiful, a beautiful jasmine, but it's not full on heavy bouquet slapping you in the face floral it's just a really gorgeous jasmine floral note with what is that i guess it's like a there's a woodsiness a little bit woodsy and it's a clean pale wood Almost, almost like a, a varnish-like scent to it. And I mean that in a good way. I enjoy the scent of things like varnish, creosote that you put on fences. It's one of my favorite smells in the world. Things like white spirit, I quite enjoy the scent. So what, what, I, what I'm saying is there's something kind of like that. Loik, where, where did that come from? Loik, kind of like that. Something kind of like that. A little bit, just a tiny bit. This is really nice. This uh, this is the sweetest of them all. And um, I think there is, there is a hint. I have smelt some of those fragrances that have real deer musk in them. And it comes off meaty to me. I don't enjoy uh, smelling the real deer musk. Um, it smells a little bit like meat, maybe slightly uh, smoky meat. And it, 
I, yeah, I just, no, I don't like it. Um, but I can kind of get a hint of that in here without it going there, if that makes sense. It's like, yeah, it's, you know, the, I'm not sure if it's Bortnikov or a region, I think it's, is it a region of Dore? I've tried, because Dan sampled quite a lot of those fragrances and ages and ages ago, I've, I've smelt some of those ones with real, real deer musk. And I feel like it's hinting towards that without actually going there, without overstepping the mark to make it like, ugh. Um, it, but it feels like it, it nods towards it. Um, let's just see. Um, <laughs> Chris says the like button isn't going to flick itself, people. <laughs> yeah, flick the like, flick it, flick it. And uh, Peter's here from Fragrance View. Hi, Peter. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Jackie says, can we please see Sweetie? Sweetie, don't come over here. Come on. Come here. Come on. Come on then. Don't knock everything over. Come here. What's up here? Come on then. She's just here. She's got, she's kind of, um, here she is. Sweetie, look, you have to look this way so people can see you. Oh. Yeah, look, there she is. She's purring as well. Hello, baby. Should we get her purring on the um, on the mic? There's, there's the mic there. Is that enough, sweetie? Or do you want more? Or, oh, sweetie, do you want to take over and I'll go and get on with some other stuff? Yeah. she is. Go over this way, look. People want to see you, don't they? They want to see your face, sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> we could just do this, couldn't we? I think everyone would probably be quite happy. Oh, yawny, yawny. Okay, well, we should probably get back to smelling. Okay. Right then, so. Jackie says, I really love musk deer, my favorite. Uh, Victor says, there's jasmine and rose in here. Mm, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, if it's, it's soft, musky and woody. Don't, please don't knock those over, babe. It's soft, musky, woodsy. It's the jasmine's, initially I felt that the jasmine was stronger. I feel like it's almost just, it's either just gently stepping back, which I can't imagine it would be already, or it's just that the other notes are, are gaining in intensity. So the jasmine's not so forward. Sweetie, please be careful, darling, because you're going to, oops, you're gonna, I don't want her knocking over Victor's lovely bottles. Right. Yeah, I, I, I do feel like there is an animalic element in here. And a lot of people have, uh, the, few, the few reviews I've seen have all said it's very clean, not particularly animalic. But there's something in here that's making me think it's a bit animalic. As I said, it, it's leaning towards those fragrances that have a little bit of re the real deer musk in them. But it's not going there fully. Okay, let's have a little look. Elaine says, I enjoy woodsy in winter. Don says, the sweater so matches your eyes, Claire. Thanks, Don. Um, now I've scrolled too far. Sweetie's got some fans in the room. Frances says she's so cute. Chris says she's so cute. <laughs> Chris says Sweetie about to do some motorboating. <laughs> Sweetie should do ASMR, says Carti. Uh, Victor can hear the purring. 
Oh, I love that little nose, says Jackie. Jackie says, earthy. I describe it like walking through a gardening centre. Clean, earthy, bit green. <laughs> Tony says, Don, her, her eyes are like Brussels. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, let's see now. Uh, Lisa is here. She says, sorry, I'm late. Evening. Hi, Lisa. Elaine says, I like this type of fragrance when I'm all wrapped up in hat and scarf. Yeah, it's, it's that it's that kind of scent. It's If I was to describe it as anything, um, it's close to anything else. And it's just straighten up a little bit. Uh, it's ballpark Bukhara from Galavan. Not that it smells similar, but I guess the fact that it's musky, it's quite unusual. It's musky, it's a little bit spicy. It's a little bit earthy. So I think if you like Bukhara, then you may well like musk deer. Yeah, it's out of all of them so far, it's my favorite, I think. Um, but we're gonna revisit all the strips and the left arm, just in case things have changed. Tracy says, right off to smell that cold air. Youngest wants to roller skate in the garden. Oh, fun. Thanks, Claire, have a great evening all. See you, Tracy, enjoy. Um, Jackie says, I agree with Claire. The opening is a bit sweet, which I think is either the jasmine or the calamus or both, but not sugar sweet. No, like a vegetable, vegetal a bit. Yeah, it's not sugary sweet. There's no, you can tell there's no usual things that, that make things sweet. So it's not like there's candy floss or sugar or anything that's kind of like synthetic sweet. Yeah, the sweetness comes from the floral, but it's really balanced by this earthiness and the spiciness. So it's, yeah, it's not particularly sweet, but it has more sweetness than everything else I've smelt at the stages that I've smelt them, at, you know, at the um, opening notes. Uh, Victor says there's some real oud in musk deer. Maybe that's what's, yeah, that's probably what's giving it, that uh, I was saying it's erring towards real deer musk but actually it's probably the oud isn't it yeah it does have um it does have that kind of it's not exactly barnyard some oud fragrances have definitely smell a bit barn like walking in the in the countryside and someone's muck spreading it's it's kind of like that but it's really in the background um it's not, it's not full on, it's not like, it's not like that. It's not like you're walking in the countryside and someone nearby is muck spreading. It's like, you just remember that they were muck spreading a little while ago. <laughs> so it's, it's very, very soft in the background. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, is there a little bit of ISOE Super in here, Victor? So I kind of get that clean, the musky cedar wood kind of thing. Not, yeah, yeah, I, f I feel like there's that mineral element as well that you get from ISOE Super, a little bit, not, it's not to any great degree. Uh, Victor says oud is not the blue cheese poopy kind of oud. No. Um, yeah, when I uh, heard the notes of musk deer, which I've forgotten most of them. It sounds like it's quite high in naturals because I think there, there's, is this the one that's got the Australian? So I might be mixing up my deers and my owls now, but um, is this the one that's got the Australian sandalwood? And yeah, there was quite a few things that sounded um, natural because um, you, you actually mentioned where they're from. So, um, uh, Jackie says, I bought the limited edition bottle for musty. I have to look at it every morning. It's so beautiful. Yeah, they are beautiful. Lizzie says, it's called, is it called musty because the deer is created from musk as opposed to the musk created from deer? Is musk deer just a breed of, of deer? Um... 
Jackie says, not leathery oud, more like the snowy trees and musky natural green, sweet like the scent trail left by a deer walking through. There is cedar, says Victor, if he remembers correctly. Australian sandalwood is in the new Macaque 2021. Okay. Um, musk deer and deer are two different species. So musk deer is actually a, is a breed of deer. Okay. Right, let's go revisit everything. So we'll start with the one we started, which was dodo. Let's see where we're at with it now. Whoa. I don't know if this is the one I said I felt like there might be some black currant or something. I don't think it was. I think that was koala, but I feel like there's something a bit like a black currantness coming through. You know how it can be, um, it can be described as urinous black currant. Um, not that it's exactly urinous, but that kind of sharp, yet sweet fruitiness. Um, this is now, so I'm picturing, it sounds weird, okay, celery, I'm, I'm picturing celery, not that it smells like celery, but you know how celery looks, and kind of almost does smell a little bit like celery, very um, kind of herbal, Herbal, very aromatic, very green, very invigorating. A dodo, I don't know too much. Obviously, it's an extinct bird. I don't know much about the dodo um, or where it lived. Or, yeah, I don't even know what sort of environment the dodo bird lived in. But this is almost peppery. Like, you know, like rocket, rocket that you get in salad, not rocket that goes up to the moon. Peppery, like I'm so I'm thinking of sort of like green, green vegetable type, green vegetables and leaves and celery and rocket and and herbs. It's yeah, kind of um, it's invigorating with uh something underneath it, again like a savoury note, something kind of edible but not vegetable now, um, could almost be, it's not quite cinnamon but how cinnamon can be, the, the, the body of cinnamon without it being cinnamon, <laughs> what am I talking about? Refreshing, very uplifting, a little bit bitter, and yeah, all the all your greens. It's a five a day in here, and they're all green. <laughs> I don't know what else I can say. That's dodo. <laughs> um, we'll move on to the next one. Rich says, "Oh dear," he's spelling it D E E R. Thanks, my dear," says Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rosemary and basil is in dodo that makes sense it's very aromatic very herbal um, Elaine says I prefer black pepper to pink Jackie says there's something also in dull I remember sniffing dodo and thinking it had something contrary in it like the rosemary and freshness and something dirty hmm No, I don't get anything at the moment. I obviously, it is on paper, um, and we're only 20 or so minutes in. But there is something, and I, I mentioned cinnamon, and it's not like it exactly smells cinnamon, but there is this thing that cinnamon does, and I've told you all about this before, and it is, it's, yeah, and you might remember. Um, sometimes cinnamon can smell a little bit like an unwashed person's groin. I know it sounds really disgusting. Um, but I kind of get that a little, I've stood near homeless people before who, who haven't had the chance to shower for a long time and I can specifically tell you that 
it's the groin that's kicking off more so than perhaps their underarms. And sometimes cinnamon reminds me, of, I think it was a particular instance that I smelt this person. And sometimes cinnamon takes me there. And I feel like if you could dissect cinnamon and take that groin bit, I feel like there's a tiny hint of that in here. And I know, you know, I'm talking absolute rubbish. I can only say what, what I'm thinking and feeling. It's not, it's not too strong. It's not, it's just an, a, a tiny little hint underneath everything. That's just taking it into that almost human dirtiness, which of course is not what they're aiming for. And it's just, just my interpretation. But mostly it's green and herbal and aromatic and invigorating. And I'm thinking of all the green stuff and the, you know, vegetables, celery, water, kind of like the, you know, the wateriness of celery as well. But it's not particularly watery, but I'm just thinking celery is coming to my mind. Celery is probably better than groin. So <laughs> I'm really sorry, Victor. <laughs> but I actually think it's really nice. It's, it's too green for my taste. But it's a very nice scent. Um, yeah, I definitely want to smell this on other people for sure. So we'll, we'll go to the next. Oh, let's look at your comments because I have a feeling you might have commented. Um, <laughs> Don says, Jackie, like vegan saliva. <laughs> nice. Um, Dear heaven, says Carter. Everyone's saying using dear. Um, the cumin can go a bit sweaty armpits on me. My skin chemistry is weird and amplifies cumin dirty aspects. <laughs> John says, Claire, I told you that was a one-off. <laughs> it wasn't you, John. I'm sure you smell wonderful all the time. <laughs> Tony says the groin is kicking off. Just wet myself. Now my groin is kicking off. Uh, Victor says it's supposed to be a very, very old style fougere. An extinct fougere like the bird dodo. Okay. Oh, scroll too far then. No, yep, yeah, okay. Right, we're getting there. Oh, what am I doing? Right then. Oh, Jimbo's here. Hey, Jim. Uh, Jackie says, Tango by Musk Milano has cumin in it and goes so dirty on me, which is heartbreaking because I love the rest of it. I can't handle much cumin at all, Jackie. Um, I've, I don't, I wouldn't say my skin necessarily amplifies it, but my nose really focuses on it and I don't enjoy it. <laughs> That's not glowing, Victor. It smells like a tramp's groin that is kicking off. I love you, Claire. <laughs> yeah, I know it's not, uh, I could have probably described it better, but I just, uh, you know, it's one of those things, say what you see or say what you smell. Lizzie, just pop back and you're talking about groins. How does that happen? It always happens, doesn't it? Some, <laughs> somewhere or another. <laughs> Uh, Victor says, as, as always, zoologists need some challenging sense. Yes, definitely. You've got to have a balance of the more appealing ones, the easy to wear, and then the ones for the, uh, the, the ones that like the animalics, the challenging sense. So there's something for everyone. Okay, then. So where were we? We've done dodo. So now we need to do koala again. So koala now. That's nice. Is there cardamom in here? So this, I feel in particular that this really needs to go on skin to kind of shine and to push it out. Um, it's really nice on paper, but you know when you just get a sense that your skin's gonna do something to it that's gonna really make it shine. So I can still smell the eucalyptus, that mentholated kind of scent. Um, but it also smells, to me, I think it's a cardamom. Um, 
it's quite a dry scent, it's certainly dry on the paper. Again, skin might change that a little bit. Um, it's green, but not, not too green. I, 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 I'm looking forward to trying this on skin because it has got a sweetness to it and that might be from the eucalyptus or I think, I can't remember if there were florals in here. Um, was this the one with mimosa? I can't remember, but there, it feels to me like there's a little, a nice little uh, hint of floral in here. Jackie says, I love the olfactory concept perfume. Some are less wearable for me than others, but one of my favorite parts of this hobby. Uh, Tony says, shorty biscuit, anyone? Yes, please. How many calories though? I'm not sure how many I've got left today. I haven't had a lot actually. So I might, I might have room for a shorty biscuit. Right. Um, yeah, John says, why is Jackie not reviewing? So Jackie's over on Instagram and she does do the occasional review of uh, fragrances. And she does really good reviews. But I think it's it's kind of like a mix. I think your Instagram's a mixture of a bit of your fragrance hobby and and just your your life and your your love of other stuff. Like I see comics and games and all sorts on there. Um, okay, then Lizzie says awkward sentence alert. Does anyone also enjoy the smell of horses, stables, and all the leather, hay, sweat, even the cough droplets on the ground just a thought horse so i think lizzie might be hinting something there victor but i'm not sure i can understand what she's saying try and I have to try and read between the lines <laughs> doesn't her mess have a uh, is it gallop gallop um i think there's a few horsey type fragrances horse inspired fragrances out there isn't there And Carty says, didn't Sarah Baker just release Equestrian Line? Oh, okay. Yeah, you'd have to check that out then, Lizzie Bet. Right, so, uh, Koala. Yeah, it's got like um, a, a sweet, spicy pepperiness. Oh, off goes sweetie. Bye, sweetie. It's really nice. Um, to me, it's more about spices now than anything else, but not a heavy spice at all. It's, it's a green kind of green sort of spice. Um, it's very nice. I look forward to trying that on skin because that is really nice koala. I enjoy that. So that's probably, is that, I'm not sure, I'm not gonna say what's my favorites yet. I'm gonna give you my top three. I mean, there's five, but <laughs> there's only five, but I'm gonna give you the three that I like the most. Um, so that was koala, so we need to do rhino. Might have a swig of my squash now. So rhinoceros. Ooh. Yeah, this now smells to me like dried tea. I am still getting that, the inside of my grandparents' house. Um quite badly actually yeah it's like dried tea maybe dried tobacco pipe tobacco it is to me it's cigarette smoke even ash even an ashtray this is a challenging scent definitely like rhinoceros was but rhinoceros the original was challenging because of the heavy leather note to me anyway this is now challenging because it actually smells like a bit like an ashtray i'm really sorry victor if that's not what you were going for but um it's it's dry uh, as i say it also smells a bit like uh smoked tea not a, not a cup of tea but at just the dried leaves Oh, Victor says, new rhino is the smell of a gentleman's cigar room. Well, you've totally nailed it. You've absolutely nailed it because I had no idea and that's just taken me. The only place really that I went to on a regular basis that, that where people smoked, it's taken me straight there. 
it's um it's got it's definitely got other facets to it but you know when when you really notice when something bangs you in the face it's hard to then figure out what else is going on in the scent Victor says I guess it has an ashtray too uh, Jackie says, yeah, I think so. Oh, hang on. What, what did John say? This one sounds quite lovely, actually. Good smoking memories. <laughs> so John's an ex-smoker. Well done, John, for giving up. Jackie says, yeah, I think so too. Love cigarette smoke. Jasmine and cigarettes by Eldo is good. And the Amouage one, Portrayal Woman. I, re I quite enjoy Jasmine and cigarettes. I need to get a sample and try it properly. But I like it in, uh, when I've tried it in the shop. So I do want to sort of retry that one. Yeah, I mean, this is, it's not unpleasant. And again, on skin, it might be a slightly different situation. It's very bold though. It's extremely bold. It's a little bit smoky. Because so, yeah, it's like, it is, it is kind of like a room that's been smoked in as opposed to someone smoking in front of you still, but it still has that smoky element to it, but it's not smoky like bonfire smoke or anything like that. It's just got a little bit of smokiness to it. And it's got a slightly sweet, there is a sweet something coming through. It's really unusual. Um, yeah, there is a sweet element, whether it's a floral or a sweet spice or something like that. Has Nagamoff and car. Is it, how do you say cut? Is it Cade? So it's a bit smoky, yeah. Very, very unusual. The fans of the more unusual zoologist stuff are going to really go for this one, I think. But... It's quite far removed from the original Rhino. So as long as people know that and don't get upset that it is not how anything like what they remember Rhino. Um, yeah, but it's definitely smoky. It's got a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of spiciness. It's definitely got a lot of layers to it. Very unusual Rhino. Not something I would wear, but I will try it on skin. I'll probably do one spray on my hands or something. Uh, it's, yeah. But I'll review, I'll review them all, but I might, with, with Rhino, I don't think I could wear it. Um, do, 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 just reading your... Lizzie says, Jasmine and cigarettes, does it smell like it sounds... I don't think it smells that cigarette-y from memory, um, but I only tried it in the shop, so you, who knows how it goes. Um, Jackie says, like this really fun tension between the sweet floral jasmine and the really dirty ashtray smoke. Uh, I think that's the jasmine and cigarettes. Ilang is in the new rhino. Okay. That, yeah, there's definitely something that was kind of sweet and floral coming through. It, yeah, it's... I wouldn't have ever picked out Ilang Ilang. Um, even now, I don't know that. I, I I just feel like there's something sweet and floral coming through, but it might um, it might be something that comes out on skin or later on in the development. So that's that. And then oh, what have we got left? Uh, we did. Do we do? Have we revisited Dodo? We did. Didn't did we? Yeah. Yeah. We did. So we've revisited Dodo. Rhino and koala, haven't we? Just tell me if I if I'm wrong. Um, Hillary says it's snowy owl coming out this year or 2021. Jackie says I now need to try rhino. Sounds like something I'd enjoy. Yes, says Victor. It is out this year. Um, and snowy owl. It's unusual indie style sent by Dawn Spencer. It's Dawn Spencer Her Herowitz. Herowitz. Um, 
Victor says it's rather environmental and fantasy style perfume. John says Ylang to me is like a bright sunshine floral. Yes, I totally agree with that. And right then, so we are going to do, what do we do first? Was it, um, that's the, that's the musk one. Yeah, so Snowy Owl then, we'll revisit that now. Was it my left arm for Snowy Owl? Yeah. Um, Victor says it's not a traditional structured perfume, Snowy Owl. This is, um, I don't think it's that weird though, Victor. It's not, um, it's not challenging. It's very natural smelling. It is, yeah, it's, it's musky. A little bit earthy. Is it earthy? And it's got this really smooth, I don't know what it is, smooth sort of greenish base. Victor says, I need to manage expectation because people are very excited about the animal. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know. If you're expecting, this is the one that's got coconut. Is that right? Snowy Owl's one with, no, hang on. Oh, see, I keep mixing, because deer, deer and owl have sort of come, or they've been kind of like talked about at the same time. I keep mixing them up and mixing up what the notes are. Um, yeah, I'm finding it really difficult to describe Snowy Owl. But I, well, I can say what it's not. It's not. It's not a gourmand. It's not a. It's not challenging. It's not particularly animalic. It feels green, but as I said earlier, more like a, a stem, moist stem of a, a flower, rather than green forests or leaves so much now kind of fresh as a freshness almost like uh, I'm thinking of I'm imagining water lilies on a, on a floating on a pond you know in a Japanese garden or something yeah there's like a slightly um I don't like saying aquatic because it because aquatics usually bring to mind the sea and the smells of the sea and seaweed and it's not that it's got the wateriness that hummingbird manages to do it's not anything like hummingbird, but it does bring you to a still pond. I'm picturing a still pond now, and I'm, I know that's probably nothing to do with the imagery that's supposed to, to be there, but it's got this watery... Maybe, I guess, if we stick with the imagery, imagine that some snow's melted into a pool on the forest floor, just where there's a gap in the trees and the sun's melted the snow and it's just this little pool and uh and that's kind of kind of what i'm getting Sh and shiny wet pebbles <laughs> so there's kind of like a um earthiness that's not exactly like smelling the earth but the mineralness of of, of stones wet stones um Victor says, owl and deer are what I call a brother and sister scent, but owl is more independent and deer is more getting, oh, getting along. Carty says, I'd try, I'd try snowy, love the concept. Tony loves hummingbird. Lizzie says, Victor, they all sound mar. they are all, they are all marvellous concepts. I love the fun and aesthetics of every animal. The originality and the ethos is beautiful. Um, Elaine says, I'm definitely going to try these fragrances as something different, which the market needs at the moment. Lizzie says, elephant and moth are my faves at the moment. Victor says, definitely try a sample. Yeah. Yeah, definitely sample first. 
or if you don't sample then the travel sizes are brilliant and they're quite swappable if you I think if you buy a travel size and you're not that keen you can probably swap it amongst your fragrant friends quite easily because they're very beautiful um yeah so um yeah there's a crispness to the snowy owl a crispness there's this watery element but a very still steel pond for me um and yeah it's almost like a green green and floral kind of element a little bit musky but not heavily musky just a bit and clean very much a clean musk so that's snowy owl i think we'll leave that and then we'll go over back to deer musk deer and this is now it's definitely spicy to me um it's like a slightly sweet spice spiciness so it makes me think of nutmeg and cinnamon um and maybe cardamom because it's kind of greenish it's not as green as um koala dodo or snowy owl a little i feel like there's a bit of green in here but it's not a green scent it's musky and spicy and a little bit earthy the sweetness that i got in the opening that jasmine has really taken a back seat at the moment It's more, I think what I like about this is, is it's not, it's so, it's not that dry. It, it's got a, it's got a moistness to it. <laughs> we like the word moist in this, uh, in this chat room, don't we? It's got a moistness to it. And that oud is just, a, if you're afraid of oud, like I can be, don't worry about it. It's it's there, but it's not pungent. It's more. It's more. It's a very well behaved. It's a supporting role. Yeah, it's so. I don't know really what else I can say. At the moment, it's musky. It's earthy. It's a bit spicy. And a little tiny hint of woodsiness. Very natural smelling. And yeah, I think that's that's it for now. So I will revisit all of these. I will do my best to review them as I get to know them. Um, but thank you so much, Victor, for sending these to me. I am so honoured. Love you to bits. Can't wait to squeeze you again next time. I find you hopefully uh, at, at Sons maybe if uh, if it happens and thank you everyone who has come along to join in the chat I really appreciate it I've got stuff to do now so I'm going to say goodbye bye everyone <laughs>